Hi guys! So today is the first video in my Makeup 101 series and today we're going to learn about foundation. So welcome to Foundation 101. My notes in front of me uh, in my cute little book so if you see me looking down that's why I, I have some stuff to talk to you about today. The first thing I want to talk to you about is just foundation in general. There's so many different types of foundations. Um, I mean, it's far beyond liquid and powder now. There's like mousse and like airbrush and there's just so many different types of foundations that I can't even sit here and talk to you about all of them because I, didn't, I don't even know that much about all of them. But um, it's just important to keep that in mind that there's a lot of different types of foundations and what might work best for one person might not work best for another. So we're gonna get into that in some more detail. A few rules about foundation that I wanna share with you. And the first rule of foundation is that you need to know your skin type. And that means whether you have dry skin, oily skin, combination skin, or normal skin. So um, oily skin, you might just get oil in the T-zone or you might get it all over your face. Dry skin could be that you have dry patches on your face or maybe in general your face is just dry. Or you can have a combination. Maybe you're oily in your T-zone but you have some dry spots. I lucked out because my skin is pretty normal. I don't really, sometimes I'll have a dry spot when a blemish is healing. Some days my T-zone might be a little more oily than normal. But in general I can pretty much do whatever to my face and it doesn't complain. And I'm pretty lucky for that because I really, really beat it up. Oh, knowing your skin type will really help you pick out what foundation is best for you. The reason is, is that if you have, say, dry skin, you might not want to use a powder foundation. That's probably going to just cling to your dry patches and it's not going to look very pretty and you're not going to be happy with the result. On the same note, if you have oily skin, you're probably not going to want a foundation usually a liquid foundation that claims to be luminous or glowy because that's going to tend to be dewy looking and that can really just accentuate the oiliness. If you have oily skin and you are trying to find a foundation that works but you're not having a good experience or you're getting frustrated because you can't find a foundation that's staying on your face well and that, um, you know, halfway through the day you have spots coming through, Try using a matte foundation. Mattifying foundations are great, and there are a lot of them out right now. Um, pretty sure Maybelline just, ha oh, Maybelline has a Fit Me, and I'm pretty sure that's a matte foundation. Um, but a lot of them will say on them matte, M-A-T-T-E, matte. So a lot of them will say on there whether they're matte or not. It really would benefit from those. They keep your face lock tight. Good thing to use would be a setting spray, like a mattifying setting spray. NYX makes one. Really good. Um, and that will help you stay matte and keep you from becoming oily. If you have dry skin and you're having a hard time finding foundation that doesn't bring out the patchiness, try a illuminating foundation. A foundation that claims it's going to give you glow, it's going to give you a luminous effect, that's going to be a good option for you because it's going to have a little extra moisture and also try using a primer that is a moisturizing primer. That will help you retain some moisture into your face and in your skin. If you have normal skin, you probably don't have any of these problems. Um, I do notice that when I have breakouts, powder foundations, just any powder at all usually just doesn't help me because it clings to that spot and it just looks awful. So knowing your skin type will really help determine what foundation is going to be best for you. It's really just a game of trying and that's that's my first rule. Rule number two is to know your undertone. It's hard to explain undertone if you don't know what it is, but usually people are warm, cool, or neutral undertoned. Um, people who have warm undertone skin are going to be a little um, richer in their skin tone, they're going to be warmer or olive skinned, and if you tan, you probably have warm skin. People who have cool skin tones tend to be pale, 
Um, you tend to have a transparent look to your skin. I have cool skin. Um, sometimes, especially during the summer, it tends to be a little bit more warmer, so neutral ish, but uh, all in all, I'm pretty cool toned, which you can see how pale I am. Knowing your undertone is important because some foundation companies do cater to your undertone. I think it's Maybelline that has a foundation range that goes warm, warm to neutral to cool, uh, which is really awesome, especially if you have trouble finding a foundation. Um, some high-end companies do this as well. In the drugstore, you tend to find a l l smaller range of foundations, and so it's important to know your undertone to kind of pick and choose those out. I know some um, makeup brands will tend, their, their makeup tends to be really too warm for me, and that's a struggle I have being cool toned. I find that a lot of foundations cater to warmer tones because more people have warm tone than school, cool toned. Um, if you don't know what tone you are when you're looking for foundations, a good way to pick it out is looking at what color jewelry suits you. So if you look better in silver jewelry, then you're cool tone, and if you look better in golds, then you're warm tone, and that's a really easy way to figure it out. If you really can't tell, go for a neutral foundation. Stick to the neutral, and you, that's a safe zone. Third rule of foundation, and honestly, I don't care. If you don't listen to anything else in my video, please, dear Lord, listen to this. Do not match your foundation to your face. Oh, I can't tell you how many times, I think probably every single time I leave my house, I will see a woman who has matched her foundation to her face, bless her heart, and she's got a line. She's got a line, and it looks, it looks awful. Uh, if you watch my channel, you know I always say to blend your foundation down your neck, and that's not for no reason. You need to match your foundation to your neck or your chest, your decollete. Do not match your foundation to your face. You're going to look like you're wearing a mask. Your face is not the same color as the rest of your body, especially if you tan. And it could be darker or lighter. If you match just to your face, you're not gonna have a good match. I promise you, I promise, promise, promise you will not look good. You will have a weird setup going on here. Weird. Don't be that person. Don't let me see you with a mask. Match to your neck or to your chest. And I know in the store it can be hard to do that, so put it on your hand and see which one is best. You don't wanna be looking like you got a mask on. Y'all, it ain't pretty. Don't be that person. Rule number four is that you might need to mix and match, and I mean colors, because like I said, in the drugstore, there's not a huge amount of options, and you might be in between shades. That's okay. That's fine. Mix them. Mix them, girl. There is nothing wrong with mixing them. Nothing wrong with it. It will just ensure that you don't have a mask. That's, that's the best. The thing about matching your foundations is it's really a guessing game until you know. I couldn't tell for the longest time what I was, and in the drugstore you don't have a lot of options of looking. You can't really open them up and see. Um, I've realized now I'm like a porcelain ivory, and it took me a long time to figure that out. Unfortunately, it's a lot of buying and figuring it out. If you can't tell what shade to get, always go a shade lighter. If you go a shade lighter, you can use a bronzer to deepen it, but you can't lighten a foundation well. You look cakey if you try to. So always go a little lighter than you think if you're unsure. That way you can put on some bronzer and you can match it that way. Rule number five about foundation is that applying it is a, is a game. Depending on the type you get, the brand, whatever, it's not easy and it's not always going to be the same with every foundation you have, so try and try again. Try applying it with a brush, try applying it with a beauty blender, try applying it with your fingers, try applying it with a different brush. Figure out what works for you and what works for each foundation that you have and you will be much happier with the result. Figure out what works with your skin. If you have a lot of hairs on your face, those fine hairs that sometimes stick out, I have that around my mouth, it's not very attractive. Go in a downward motion, that will help them disappear. If you're finding you're having a hard time blending your foundation out, use circular motions when you're putting on your foundation. 
those are the things that you're gonna figure out that work for you and it's really just trying and trying again like I've said before practice makes perfect with everything especially with finding your foundation I feel like it's one of the hardest parts of makeup to figure out but once you got it you got it girl. rule number six of foundation is that you need to match your foundation and your primer what do you mean by that Nina let me tell you what I mean I mean that if you have a foundation that is water-based and you use a primer that is oil-based, let's think about how this works. Let's do a little science here, people. Do oil and water mix? No. Why would you think that oil and water would mix on your face? They don't. They don't. If you find that you're using a primer and your foundation is kind of running off or not working very well, they might not be the same. You want to make sure you use a water-based primer with a water-based foundation. No, oil-based is oil-based. And there aren't a lot of oil-based foundations out there, but there are some oil-based primers, so just be aware of that. If you use a silicone primer, you're pretty much solid because silicone is just like, it's a weird thing and it doesn't really affect much. So those are just some things to think of. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and helpful for you. If you have any questions or suggestions for other videos, please leave them down in the comments below. As always, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Nina Needs Makeup, all one word. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. And that's it for today. I'll see you in my next Makeup 101. Bye. I feel like I've been going on on a tangent because it's like, foundation is so confusing. I used to think, man, I was just, I, it's just, just confusing. Like foundation can just be tough because it's hard to know what works for you, what's gonna fit your face, what's gonna fit you. It's hard to know what's gonna look good, what your color is, especially in the drugstore. They don't give you the options of testing like places uh, like Ulta and Sephora do. So it's really just figuring out what works for you, figuring out what's best for you, and please follow some of these rules. If nothing, follow, follow rule number three, because that is just...